Okay, we've been researching how to move these scale patterns around. The same scale patterns we learned in A minor, we figured out how to move them around. So uh, it's just basically attaching a bar chord to the scale pattern, and then when we move the bar chord around, we can find where that scale pattern goes for that key. And as we said, here's A minor, here's our second position scale. So when we move that bar chord around, here's B. So this would be for the key of B, and this would be Okay, here's another C, there's a C minor, here's where our fifth scale would be. Okay, so let's start a another a backing track. I've loaded another backing track in the looper. We'll give this a, a shot and I'll show you what it's like in a key of C minor. Here we go. So here's our C minor bar chord. And here's our second position scale. again. Two frets up. Bring us to our third scale. And three frets up. Bring us to our fourth scale. Same scale we play down here, not the higher. Half, one step up, or one half step up actually, is our uh, first scale. be getting uh, how these things move around. So it's pretty easy. They all connect the same way. The order of the scales never change no matter what key you're in. And once you find a bar chord, you can find all the other scales in that key and how it hooks together. It's pretty simple. Okay, so let's try another uh, key. I've loaded more backing tracks in the looper. I'm going to have to access the memory card. So we're going to go up to 99. And when we go past number 99, you see the card number goes up. And we're going to go to, let's go up to, I think it's number yeah, 70. Nope, 71. Okay, 71. This is uh, D minor. So here's our D minor chord. That's where our fifth scale is going to be. Here's our D minor chord here. That's where our, our uh, second scale is going to be. Okay. So, let's try D minor. So here's our fifth scale. Half step higher takes us to our first scale. Take us to our 
third scale. Okay, so you can see how when you when you select notes to create your guitar solos, they're, they're notes that are fit within a certain scale frame. And when you go out, like for example, earlier when I went out, that note there wasn't in. It was not in the scale frame. Okay, let's go up another, another uh, key. And then we're gonna do E minor. Here's our E minor bar chord. Here's your E minor bar chord right here. So, so here's our fifth position right here. Here's our fifth scale. Okay. So let's try E minor next. Here's our E minor bar chord. So this is our E minor. So we can actually fit the second position over, over this E minor open chord as long as we're willing to incorporate the open strings. So it would be... Uh, So we can use these uh, open strings to really uh, we can use the open strings and we can really do some really cool things later on that I'll show you some hammer on type stuff uh, for any given key. So it's important to know uh, the open scale that covers certain keys you can do certain things and if you can incorporate the open strings there's some really cool things you can do but we'll cover that later uh, for now uh, we are covering how to move the scales around and um, we've covered let's uh, see uh, D minor and E minor now we're going to do F minor <laughs> So here's our second position scale. Here's our scale. Okay, so here we go. F minor.
half step higher takes us to our first position. Four frets higher take us to our second scale. this video at the website you're seeing a list of backing tracks underneath the video that you can try all these scales out yourself you can play the backing tracks or you can download them for free and you can go ahead and run these scales across to see how they fit and there's a lot of different keys that are represented there if you are watching this video on YouTube uh, there's a link in the description that you can head on over and you can get the backing tracks that support these scales. And then you can go ahead and try these scales over the backing tracks to see where they go. Now it doesn't matter what style of music you want to study, whether it be rock or blues or classical or jazz or, or even metal. I mean, these scales, they apply to every style. So learning them uh, will help you uh, advance in the style of music you want to study. So this is something that's universal. It, it, it cuts across every style of music, and you can uh, play these in, in any style that you want to study. Okay? So let's continue in the next lesson. <laughs>